Hello guys, welcome to another episode in our configuration management explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over CM5 access restriction for change. As always, your support is very much appreciated. And one free and easy way to contribute and support the channel is by subscribing to help grow the channel if you have not done so already. Also, do not forget to give the like button a hit or a smash and ring the notification bell to stay updated whenever I release new videos. Thank you and let's dive right in. Access restriction for change. This control objective is to define, document and approve and enforce physical and logical access restrictions associated with the changes to the system. Definition and documentation. Clearly define and document access restrictions related to changes in the information system. This involves specifying who is authorized to make changes, what changes they can make, and under what condition. Approval and enforcement. This ensures that access restrictions are approved by appropriate organizational officials and strictly enforced. This includes both physical access, example, access to hardware and logical access, that is example, access to software and configuration files. Those who have access to the, uh, the software directly, the configuration files, and so on and so forth, has to be determined, especially the audit files and configuration files. Also, auditing and monitoring. Regularly auditing and monitor access restrictions to ensure compliance. This includes reviewing the logs, and reports generated by automated mechanisms to detect any unauthorized accesses or changes. An example of some of the tools to use are like the Tripwire. The Tripwire can help you with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, tracking the integrity of your files, configuration files, and, you know, you know, and the software in general. Now, this control in Red 5 is selected for all the three baseline, that is the low, moderate and high baseline but it is not a privacy control you notice that the privacy control baseline has not been selected for this so access restriction for change is selected for all the three control or all the three is selected for all the three security baseline now let's read the control requirement explanation for cm5 in 853 rev 5. cm5 Access restriction for change. The control, define, document, approve, and enforce physical and logical access restrictions associated with changes to the system. Now, the discussion here says that changes to the hardware, software, or firmware components of system or the operational procedures related to the system can potentially have significant effect on the security of the system and individual's privacy. Therefore, organization permit only qualified and authorized individuals to access systems for purposes of initiating changes. Access restrictions include physical and logical access control. Therefore, see this control, AC3, which is access enforcement, and the PE3, which is the physical access control. Software libraries, workflow automation, media libraries, abstract layers, that is changes implemented into external interfaces rather than directly into systems and change windows. That is changes occur only during specified time that the organization has scheduled for changes. That is the patch cycle or the maintenance cycle. This control has about seven control enhancement, but three of those have been, you know, withdrawn and incorporated into other controls. So, in a nutshell, we have only four control enhancement left for the CM5. And one enhancement, one is automated access enforcement and audit records. And enhancement two and enhancement three, these controls have been incorporated into other controls in a nutshell, meaning withdrawn, right? And enhancement four, which is the dual authorization. It says enforce dual authorization for implementing changes, right? Meaning you have to get like multiple authorization before you implement change into the operational environment or the production environment. 
Enhancement five talks about privilege limitation for production and operation. You don't give a lot of people the privilege access to your production environment, right? Limit privilege to change system component and system related information within the production or operational environment and review and reevaluate privileges, which is self explanatory. All right. Control enhancement six. This talk about what limit library privilege, limit library privilege to change software resident within the software libraries and enhancement seven. It is actually what withdrawn and incorporated into SI seven. Now, moving on, let's look at some of the importance of the access restrictions for change control. The CM5 control is crucial for protecting the integrity and security of the information system by ensuring that only authorized individuals can make changes. This control helps reduce the risk of unauthorized modification, which can lead to security vulnerabilities, system failures, and data breaches. It also reduces the risk of security incidents caused by unauthorized changes. Now let's look at the control assessment approach. To ensure the proper implementation and optimal performance of this CM4 control, addressing both the design and operational effectiveness, we take the following step. Obtain and examine the organization's policy or procedure, that is the dash one control related to configuration management and access control, because you're gonna look at those who have access and those who should not be having the access. Ensuring these documents define the processes for restricting access to make changes, including both physical and logical access restriction. Interview key personnel and stakeholder. Conduct interviews with personnel responsible for configuration management, including system administrators, system security officers, and members of the configuration control board, that is the CCB. Verify their understanding of the CM5 control requirements and their roles in enforcing access restrictions. And finally, examine change management record. It's always important. Review the records of the recent changes to the information system. Look for evidence that access restrictions were enforced by leveraging the access control list, that's the ACLs, and also that only authorized personnel made those changes. Verify that all changes were logged and documented according to the organization's policy, that is using any change management ticketing system. That's it for this episode. Please do like, subscribe, and share, and comment on this video so the YouTube algorithm will expose these videos to lots of people who could benefit from these videos. Our next episode will be CM6, that is the configuration settings. See you in the next one.